Welcome. So the Sony Xperia 1 Mark II has some powerful cameras, and we can even use it to shoot the stars. Now this is part three of my series on Photo Pro, where we dive into astrophotography. If you haven't already, watched the first two parts as they build on each other. And we're definitely going to be shooting raw in this video. Astrophotography requires preparation. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through the prep, planning, shooting, all the way through editing in Lightroom. So let's get started. Take a look at this astro shot by JKFT on Reddit. Now the shot is awesome, but it was taken at Banff National Park, which is a perfect location with no light pollution. But what about people like us that live in cities? If we try to take a similar photo, we will get something like this. And just look at all this random light pollution covering all the stars. But don't worry, we can still shoot the Milky Way, and I'll show you how. If you're new to the channel, welcome. This channel is all about helping you get the best photos and videos from your smartphone. More Xperia content and coverage on other phones is coming. So subscribe to join our small community if you haven't already. Also, this video is with the Xperia 1 Mark II, but much of what I'm going to cover applies to other phones as well. Your results may vary, though. So first, let's talk about gear. We will be doing slow shutter speeds of about 30 seconds, where we need to keep the phone perfectly still. We need a tripod of some sort. Now, any standard tripod with a phone mount on top will work fine. I personally prefer a compact option like these Gorilla Pods. And this is a cheaper one uh, that you can see here. It has the flexible legs at the bottom. It has a spring-loaded mount on top, which is not as stable, but, but it gets the job done. And it's a decent option for the price, and it folds up nicely. Uh, you can even put it in your pocket if you want to. Now, my favorite option is this Gorilla Pod, which is more expensive, but a lot more rugged. Uh, this mount on top is really good. Uh, you can see it has these locking mechanisms where I can loosen it and it snaps in different positions and I can tighten it. Another cool feature is that the actual phone holder has a locking mechanism, so it's not spring-loaded. So if I loosen it back here, I can open this up and then I can lock it and it's not going to move now, which is really great for stability. Also, the legs are more rugged, uh, which, which helps in the stability as well. I'll drop a link for both of these in the description. Another cool feature for this one is that I can loosen this and change the orientation. So you can go landscape or portrait. Pretty handy. It's hard to beat. So the next step is planning our location. We have to decide where we want to go to take the shot. And we might want to go somewhere darker, like JKFT did with the National Park. When picking a location, the main thing you want to consider is light pollution. So to simplify this, there are four main light pollution groups. There's dark sky, which is the best, and what you'll find in you know, big national parks. There's rural sky, which is you know, smaller towns and farmlands and things like that. Then we have suburbs of a city, and then city sky, which is the worst and not really an option when shooting astro. So you want to find a location that is at least in the suburb range. Now you might have to drive out a bit if you're in the city center. In my case, I had to drive 20 minutes to get to a suburb area. And to make this easier, you can use a light pollution map like this one and see how far you need to drive out. From what I've seen, in most cities, 20 to 30 minutes will get you to at least a level 5 dark sky. So next, we have to decide where to aim the camera in the sky. And for this, I recommend using an app like Sky Safari. The free version of this app will tell you what you need to know. So if we jump in, you can see the sky right here. And we can change the time. So if I'm going out at you know 10 o'clock, I can set it here to see exactly what the sky is going to look like. And then when I look at the sky, you'll notice we can see the Milky Way galaxy here. And a lot of the photos you see are taken of you know near Sagittarius, which is the brightest part of the Milky Way galaxy right now. But you can see the galaxy actually stretches across the sky right now. So it's up to you what you want to try to shoot, uh, but this will give you an idea of what your options are. And once you have something picked out, we can put the compass on at the bottom right. And then as we move the phone around, it's going to update what the sky looks like. And then once we have our target, then we can shoot. Pretty straightforward. Now comes the easy part, actually taking the photo. So we have our phone ready to go on the Gorillapod, and we're going to jump into Photo Pro. In Photo Pro, we want to make sure we're in manual mode, and we want to make sure that the shutter speed is set to the maximum of 30 seconds so that we can get the most light that we can. We're also going to set it on a 3 second or 10 second timer, 
to minimize camera shake when we hit the shutter. And we can set it on autofocus and leave the other settings pretty much on default. You want to make sure that you're shooting in RAW. I like to shoot RAW plus JPEG. So for ISO, I have a tip for you. If you're in a dark location like the National Park, set it all the way to 3200 to get the most light you can. But if you're in a rural location, then you can go down to about 1600. And if you're in a suburban location like I was, then you can go all the way to about 800. Now these are general rule of thumbs and you can kind of tweak the ISO and see you know, what kind of shots you get. But these seem to be a good starting point from what I've seen. And there you go. Hit the shutter button and it'll take the photo. If you're shooting in a suburban sky, the raw file is going to look something like this with tons of light pollution. But don't worry, the next step is the edit. If you're enjoying this video, hit the like button. So now we're in Lightroom with the raw file that I just showed you. This was shot at 30 second shutter speed at 800 ISO. And right now it looks a little bit like a disaster, uh, but there's a lot of hidden greatness here. So let's uh, start by getting rid of this light pollution. Keep a close eye on the histogram as I make changes. So first we'll start by bringing down the exposure a bit. And we'll bring up the contrast quite a bit. And we'll bring the black level down to darken the sky. So now let's go to the magic sliders. Clarity into haze. And for both of these we're going to add quite a bit uh, to get rid of all that light pollution. Now just look at this. This looks amazing. If we zoom in, we'll see that there's some noise in this image. And so we can add some noise reduction to clean it up. And there we go. And now we can see the Milky Way in this photo. Keep in mind this is the darker side of the galaxy, uh, not near Sagittarius. And even though it's dimmer, I was able to capture this in a suburban sky. And for you Astro fans, uh, the star at the top is Deneb. Uh, so that should orient you in terms of what we're looking at here. I hope you found that helpful. The Xperia camera is powerful, and now you can push it even further with Astro. Hope you enjoy. Don't forget to like this video, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. On the video front, the Xperia recently got full Filmic Pro support. I'll be doing another tutorial on Cinema Pro versus Filmic Pro, so keep an eye out for that. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.